All right. Well, now I would like to bring up our next guest speaker. And would you please welcome Ms. Sharon Angel to the stage. She will introduce you. Good evening, everyone. It is so good to be here. And um, thank you to the church for this wonderful opportunity. I'm just going to share a little bit about myself, my background, my story, and also how I overcame discrimination, bias, and intolerance, and where I am today. So a little bit about me. I grew up in an Indian traditional Christian family. I was born and raised in India, and I came here for my undergrad. So the journey itself has been amazing. To be in the land of the free and the brave has been amazing. But getting here, that journey was quite a turmoil. But I'm happy about it, and I'm happy um, to think back and see where I am. So growing up, I was born in this um, traditional Indian Christian missionary family. And if you said my last name back home, everyone would know um, my grandfather's name. And because his name was so well known, I felt like there was a mold that I needed to fit into or a last name that I needed to keep up just by birthright, just by being born in the family. So at a very young age, almost at 10, I started hosting television shows and the shows were on national networks in India. So people quickly recognized who I was and um, it was great because I liked being in media. I liked being in front of the camera, speaking to an audience. Public uh, events came naturally to me. And at a very young age, I was able to speak to a crowd of 40,000 to 400,000 people. And it was amazing because which young kid gets that opportunity, right? So growing up in that setting, as much as I enjoyed the benefits of that, the high standard of living, the comparisons um, to who I should be, who I must be as a young South Asian Christian female, the pressure was mounting up day by day. Because when I was on set, usually I was the only female there. And it was usually a set of 30 people, 40 people, 10 people, um, 60 people. And although I didn't have to fight um, men or I didn't have to disagree with men, I did see that I was the odd one out or I was a minority. So growing up, I wanted to, growing up being in media, hosting television shows and being born into the family in a, in a strict traditional lifestyle, I wanted to kind of take um, my work and transition into social media. So Facebook was very new back then when I was a teenager in my pre-teens, I think. Uh, Facebook had just come to India and was, was like the big thing. So I posted my about my life, pictures, videos, and about the work that I did. And it initially it was kind of jarring to me to get comments and the, the immediate feedback. It was kind of different for me. But um, over time, I saw that the comments turned into negative comments and, and focused to what I looked like, my hair, my skin, what I wore, the kind of speaking that I did instead of the message. So it, it did take, you know, I, I was kind of, you know, taken aback by it because I knew the message that I had to give was important. And I knew I was presentable in front of an audience, but the negative comments and the things that were said about me did hurt me. And slowly, because I didn't know how to address it, because, because social, media, social media was so new back then, I didn't know how to address it. Um, it turned into hate. It turned into attacks against my life, who I am, and also my family. And then it's then is when it really got to me to say, okay, I need to do something about this. But the more I posted, the more I tried to mitigate it, it only got worse and it turned into hate, it turned into negativity and was getting to me personally. 
And in my life as a teenager, I was going through many other things, multiple transitions, uh, transition to the, to the States and my education. And I had also lost my grandfather at that point. So it was devastating, the least to say. So I shut down my Facebook page because I didn't have language to one, express how I felt and also understanding to take on um, hate or negativity online. And also, as a young South Asian female, I didn't have mentors in that space. So I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know where to ask for advice. I didn't know how to deal with it. But fast forward to 2013, I started a YouTube channel because at that time, by that point, I had finished my undergrad. I had worked in a broadcasting company. I had experience. I had gone to school and learned about media and learned about my craft. And also kind of got aware of who I am as a person. So 2013, I started my YouTube channel. In 2015, December, I had posted a video about social work and why it is important to give back to the community, give back to um, help people in our own community. And that video took off because it was a completely different perspective to everything that I had been saying thus far. And it really came from my heart. It came from my soul. So people saw that. And now, Fast forward to 2023, my YouTube channel has millions of views and thousands of subscribers. But what I'm proud about is the conversation that happens on the channel. It has become a safe space for people to share their opinions, share their thoughts, share their views. There might be two clashing opinions, extreme, people coming from different backgrounds, people coming from different religions, people coming from different cultures, but still be able to express what they feel and say what they need to say. And it is a safe space where people can think. They might not agree, they might disagree, but it's a place where they can think and realize the discrimination or the bias or just the things that we have been handed down over generations. So I'm super happy about being able to have that space on my YouTube channel to talk about things that are specific to women, specific to my culture, my religion, and have an open space. And over the years, I've also been able to write a book and talk about identity and the courage to find out who we are and host a podcast. Season three just ended with thousands of listeners, thousands of subscribers, which I'm super happy about. And this season, I was able to take on tough, controversial, taboo topics and still have that conversation of how are we different? What can we do about our biases? So now being a South Asian female Christian who is in the media space, I understand that if there are any lessons that I've learned, it's one, to take control of our narrative. We must know who we are. What do we like? What do we want to do? What are our yeses and noes? Number two, to know our craft, to really understand our craft. We might be handed off something. We might have been given something. But really in our industry, to really be good, and really be a number one, or even be a leader, or be outstanding, we need to learn our craft. And number three, for the discrimination, the biases, and the intolerance that we face, I have learned that dealing with grace and wisdom is the best tool that we have in our hands. And dealing with hate and negativity by being gracious and kind is the best way to deal with it. Thank you very much, Sharon.